Today we will examine sculptures, both modern and that of the old world. I hope you're all doing well and welcome. Because my computer is slow, I'm going to make a really simple video this week. It's going to be two parts. The first part will be all this stuff that I have open. The second part will be a bunch of pictures. I have water boiling in the background, forgive me. And let's start with any corrections from past videos. Though this was not the point of my last video, I did talk about this statue. And quickly I was told in the comments that this was a modern statue created by a not-so-famous artist. And I was really impressed with this statue. I really think it has the feel of the old world. But in the end, it was supposedly created by this Igor Mitoraj born 1944, died 2014. He was a Polish artist and sculptor, known for his fragmented sculptures of the human body. He's considered one of the most internationally recognized Polish sculptors. And this man really has an impressive portfolio. And initially I thought, this is all so recent, and didn't want to investigate at all. I just wanted to accept that he was the artist. Here again we can see some of his other works. And really looking old. And really interesting on this particular website. What is this? Artsy.net. He has 850 followers. Mind you, he died in 2014. But not very famous. Not for some guy who had art scattered all over the ruins of Pompeii. Why would they even allow modern art to be scattered amongst the ruins of Pompeii, this world heritage site. It seems pretty stupid, actually. A pretty ridiculous place to be displaying art. It's already fascinating enough. And here again, a look at some of his work. Some of them just looking like they were pulled out of the mud, but some looking modern. And nevertheless, I am impressed with this art. I do feel it has a very old world feel. He's good. So really, this guy reminded me of somebody in the past, but not as good as this somebody in the past, though I'm very impressed with this man's artwork. And even though something seems fishy, I will accept it for now. But it has led me to look at the works of this man. So very interesting, just mixing these statues with older ones to where we don't even know what's what. Perhaps just creating some confusion. And this part was just really weird that they were selling his stuff beyond his death. And it's not even that popular. And some of it looks old and classical. And some of it looks crappy. Here we can see a kind of attempt to create some veiling, it seems like. And just not as impressive as the work of Bernini, who is also a mysterious man. Here, I believe this is a self-portrait of Bernini. And just have a look at this for a carving. Of course, we've discussed these statues in past videos, and the impossibility of actually carving some of these old classical works. And this is a great example. Is anybody carving something like this? In my opinion, no. This is beyond anything. And we could just throw this in the 3D printer pile. Really the only thing that we can imagine having the ability to create something like this. Out of a material that we are told is stone. Here again my favorites. The veiling. Same sculptor once again, Bernini. And in my opinion, nothing is more impressive than this. And those statues in my opinion, are some of the best in the world. Here again, we can see some of his works. 
and they're just everywhere. He would have had to create one statue per day at a minimum. An overly ambitious artist. Or was he the artist? We are told he lived from 1598 to 1680. So all that glory, nobody, in my opinion, has replicated the likes of this artwork. Not since, according to the narrative, the 1600s. And of course, his greatest piece, in my opinion, and they keep it well hidden. You actually have to do a search of Fisherman's Net, and we get this image here. A marble net. Forget about the statues. Just carve a net. Somebody carve me a marble net. Maybe hanging on a coat rack. And without even reading this man's history, I reject it. I reject that a man has carved this. And just this net is enough reason to reject the history that we are given. This net proves how absolutely advanced the past civilization was. And the past civilization was not this guy. In my opinion, these works come from a factory. These are made by machines in a factory of the old world. Just like all the ornamentation on the cathedrals and everything else made of stone. There was no carving in the old world. They had at their disposal the technology that we are just now beginning to use and understand. And we have simply taken credit for all of this. Even these works have been credited to this man, Lorenzo Bernini. And I don't even want to get into his narrative today. It's perfectly ridiculous, but I was more interested in touching on the works that he's given credit for. And here's his grave. This great man was buried in a church under some tiles. That's it. What are we going to do with Bernini? Just stuff him under one of those tiles in the corner of the church. I hope this is not my fate. And I'm tempted to read, but I won't. In 1630, he had an affair with a married woman named Costanza. Just stupid. But I will say that the stuff he's attributed to having created is some of the finest. Here we can see the plaza in front of St. Peter's, and these would have all been his statues. Just everything, just whenever we see this glory, it's attributed to Bernini. And he was traveling all over the place, making fountains and sculptures and architectural wonders as well. So we'll just move on. Here somebody sent me this link to the restoration of the St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. And I just love St. Patrick's. One of the more exciting things that I visited in New York City. I didn't actually go inside, I just sat across the street and stared at it. Mind blown. And now they're doing renovations. As we can see here, here's the man next to this column. Just a mind-blowing column. And I just really like these pictures. They were just excellent resolution. And actually in this article, they're trying to tell us that this is plaster. They're trying to pull a World's Fair on us again and tell us this is all wood and plaster. Some parts of the article conflicting other parts. Nevertheless, they're doing a full renovation, cleaning up all the material, repairing organ pipes, stained glass. And here we can see some of the ornamentation just up on the ceiling vault here. Super, super intricate. And again, I don't care what it's made out of. Clearly looks like a concrete here. And you just wouldn't use a plaster. You would definitely use a concrete, not a plaster, not a sheetrock type of material. And what of all this ornamentation? Carved? Certainly not. And in past videos, I've discussed how these might have been kits. And these pieces, as you can see, were just assembled like a kit. And this may be a cement kit facade over a wood, but not a plaster. And at some point in the article, it talks about plaster. And this appears to have been recently painted very poorly. 
we can see the painters were sloppy. And this may be a restoration piece. This piece not as impressive as the things we see next to it, which are perfect. Here you see the plastered ceiling vaults will soon be scrubbed clean. There's no scrubbing uh, plaster. Now a concrete or cement could be scrubbed. And here they're saying they're going to scrub and repaint. Very strange. They're putting in fire suppression systems. Here we can see brick. Absolute brick. And the stained glass behind it. And this article seems to be trying to sell us the idea, perhaps, that this is a temporary cathedral. <laughs> and here again, another article that was sent to me. And you see, there's just no plastering something like this. You don't put plaster outside. It would just fall apart in the first rain. Plaster is meant for indoors, like sheetrock. And they tell us here, this was cleaned and restored. Again, a kit. Here we can see kit pieces, clear, clear, clear as could be. Just like putting together a tile pattern in a bathroom. And I don't believe, of course, anything was carved. This is clearly a model that somebody ordered in the old world and assembled. How was it adhered? I don't know. Perhaps these guys got a clue while they were doing their restoration. And here a look at the spire reaching 300 plus feet into the sky, completed in 1888. And look at these guys with their iPads and everything fancy, just trying to figure out how this was done, supposedly, in 1888. And here she is. What a beauty. Restored interior can be seen here. The cathedral is ready for uh, another century of service and i don't think that we can rebuild this at best we can clean it up and that's all these guys have done maybe they could recreate some of the ornamentation but in my opinion beyond our modern abilities still today just look at the modern mormon temples compared to the ones of the past night and day Absolute junk they're pumping out today, and the old stuff just having all the finesse that we see throughout the realm. And let's have a little look at Notre Dame in Paris. Speaking of building cathedrals in modern times, as many of you know, a great portion of it burned recently. And here we are, several years later, and have they even begun to reconstruct this thing? What is the holdup? We're not even building it from scratch. It's just the top, and yet, entire cathedrals, we are told, at the time of construction, took one to five years to build, with no power tools, no heavy equipment, horse and buggy. So what's the big delay? Let's see what they have to say. Back to Notre Dame, cathedral in Paris. A little look at the restoration two years after the fire. So here we go. It looks like they've built a platform up here and they have plans to rebuild it in a historically accurate manner. And they tell us here's what we know about how long it will take. Here we see something. Workers are pictured at the reconstruction site of the cathedral. And what do I see? Workers have cemented a bucket in place. And it looks like they have set a five-year restoration deadline in time for the 2024 Paris Olympics. But French officials and experts familiar with medieval restoration work say this timeline is unrealistic and it could take about 15 to 20 years to rebuild the roof, spire, and parts of stone vaulting that fell through to the main sanctuary. There you go. This is excellent, because I would have loved to speak to an official or an expert familiar with medieval construction or restoration, and I would have asked them, how long would it take to build such a structure? And here we have an estimate. 15 to 20 years just for the roof spire and parts of the stone vaulting. So we could imagine that the whole structure, built from scratch, from the ground up, 
might take double this 15 to 20 year estimate. And with horse and buggy, how long? This is with all modern everything. 15 to 20 year estimate with state-of-the-art cranes and supposed technology. And if you remember my video on Guelph or Guelph, Ontario, Canada, they were popping out a cathedral per year for 15 years. One cathedral per year. Again, if we go back to Fort Jefferson, off the tip of Florida, one year. 16 million bricks in one year. And here we have experts telling us just to repair the roof spire and parts of the vault, 15 to 20 years. And I believe them. I believe these experts. This is more like it. And here, Macron is living in a fantasy, as usual, with his five-year restoration deadline. And I look forward to monitoring this restoration, because I think it's a great example of everything that we discuss on these channels. And let's go bonus for a minute. I don't remember who was sharing this. It may have been IRS Media or even Jared Boosters. These sculpted keystones. I just love these keystones and think that some of them may be modern, but many are from the old world. This is one of my favorites right here. I used it as a thumbnail for a video on my off-topic channel. Just beautiful. And this is just a keystone. And I thought, can I buy a keystone today like this? Optimistically, I did a search. And we have this company that comes up. Seems like a key player in the keystone business. And here we go. Let's go 10. And let's go... 15 by 8. How much? Not giving us a price. Here we go. CastleDesigns.com A decorative keystone over mantle. So this thing is just cheesy. Not even made out of stone or concrete. And they want a thousand bucks. It's 125 pounds. Maybe it is made out of concrete. Nevertheless, a thousand bucks right here. Ships in seven to ten days, and let's see what else they have. Sculpted ornaments. Here we go. Everything having the aspirations to be old world, but looking very, very cheap. Nonetheless, very interesting. I might stick some of these on the side of my house. Still not the keystone that I was looking for. Here we go. A plaster keystone. 50 bucks. So, I don't know. Maybe online is not the best place to find a keystone. But how about in the 1800s? How much more difficult would it be to acquire a keystone? And just about all old buildings in the old world had them. And all different kinds, not just some cookie cutter. Where were they getting all these keystones? And it doesn't matter w which country you're looking at. In the world, all buildings are adorned with these intricate keystones. Just a little accessory, oftentimes not even being noticed. Can you imagine the strength of this concrete? This concrete grape branch supporting the grapes? Unbelievable. And if you've ever worked with concrete, you know. What a magnificent feat this is. And just a small, unimportant feature of the building. Well, I think that's about it. I thank you for joining me today. Do have a blessed day. Be sure to check out my coffee and other goods in the link below. And I'll see you next week. And if these videos suck lately, it might be because I've quit smoking indoors for the sake of my dog. I've also started Dr. Gundry's protocol, not eating wheat, corn, potatoes, beans or rice. What is left is what I thought initially. 
But I felt I really needed a change. And when he talked about all these foods containing lectins, essentially lectins tearing small holes in your gut, your intestines, and the lining of it, causing leakage in your pipes and things going in parts of the body that they shouldn't, leading to perhaps all degenerative diseases. And in Chinese medicine, they call many of these vegetables nightshades and have told this if we're to believe the timeline thousands of years ago i always talk about old chinese wisdom and medicine coming from the old civilization similar to the architecture and all great knowledge of old especially that which surpasses the things that we know and create today but i liked that dr gundry had come to this conclusion through 30 plus years of research and now west and east had a meeting of the minds or philosophies and at that point i think it's undeniable so i tried and i felt really good inside and had a lot more energy and very little blood sugar spike I could easily not eat all day after being on this diet for a couple weeks. I usually tell myself, oh, I should eat. And it's not like it was before. At times it felt like a small internal train wreck within. And so I continue. I continue eating this diet that he prescribes. And there actually are tons of foods. It's got me eating all kinds of other foods that I should have been eating, but I was so focused on primarily wheat 